Over the past few weeks, we've been talking about the mathematical practices, and I'm going to go into the avenues of thinking and navigating the problem solving process. Yes, we're going to use ChatGPT to help us organize our thinking as educators. And if you are a principal and you're thinking, how do I help teachers with the mathematical practices? You can do that and create professional development using ChatGPT. But let me show you those mathematical practices again. Before I continue, on December 7th at 7 a.m. Pacific time, 9 a.m. Central time, I'm doing a webinar on using ChatGPT as a partner, as a buddy, to help you slow down and use it as a thought partner. And it will be a webinar for about 40 minutes and then we'll have Q&A. So grab the link in the description, register, and I will see you on December 7th. The mathematical practices look like this on the state standards uh, information for California. So again, you'd have the overarching habits of mind and productive mathematical thinker. So these two mathematical practices, making sense of the problem and persevering and solving them and attending to precision are the overarching habits of mind. However, we also have reasoning and explaining, modeling and using tools, seeing structure and generalizing. But typically when we see these, it's kind it can be confusing for many educators. And then we also have um, the way this looks, and let's go back here, is making sense of the problem and persevering in solving them. And then you see that number two, three, four, five, six, and seven are now in the order that they're listed based on the National Council of Teachers of Mathematics. And you see six down here. And you can see this using the state standards uh, PDF for California, and you will get both this version and this version. There is a book called Routines for Reasoning, and what they have done is they've looked at the mathematical practices as an umbrella model. And when we revisit this, this is what it looks like. Like we have mathematical practice number one, making sense of the problem and persevering and solving them. And then we have these three avenues of thinking. Mathematical practice two, reasoning, reason abstractly and quantitatively. So that's one avenue. Then the other avenue of structure, looking for and making use of structure, and then repetition. Look for and express regularity and repeated reasoning. So we're going to work on that one today. If you haven't seen the other two videos, um, you can check out the videos at the end of this video, or you can click here. This is what this looks like as well. Once you choose one of these avenues of thinking, and it, students can choose any one of these, and, and of course, you should teach them individually uh, and teach them all eight, ma- eight mathematical practices. But then we have these other four. And students can choose, or you can choose um, MP3, 4, 5, or 6. But I would argue that you will always do 6. You want to attend to precision. Um, if there's um, an equation and you need to line up things, you don't want to be in the classroom teaching and writing on the left and the right and up and down, and then students are confused and they do the same thing. The other thing is you want to be able to model the mathematics if that um, if there's a graph or um, maybe you need to model the equation, like what does that look like? Maybe you want to use appropriate tools. Maybe you're using manipulatives. Um, Maybe you're using a metric system. Maybe you're using a ruler, a number line, um, positive negatives, the four quadrants, things like that. And then MP3. This is where kids can have or students can have really good conversations and critique the reasoning of others. So we'll do the last um, three, four, five, and six in a separate one. But I want to look for and express regularity and repeated reasoning. And what we're going to do is we're going to grab a public uh, problem on the Smarter Balance sample items, and then we're going to do this avenue of thinking. This is the sample item I'm going to use for the Mathematical Practice 8. And remember, the Mathematical Practice 8 is look for and express regularity in repeated reasoning. And this is the item. So I took a a screenshot of this and it says there are a total of 500 students in grades one through five in an elementary school. 
17% of the total number of students are in first grade. 19% of the total number of students are in fourth grade. The number of third grade students is nine less than the number of fourth grade students. The number of second grade students is 10 less than the number of fifth grade students. So I am asking ChatGPT to help. So even if you're really good at, you know, mathematics, sometimes slowing down and coming up with ideas and becoming create creative and letting ChatGPT support you and how you can teach this is fantastic. So what, here's the problem. So I said using MP8, I probably didn't need to re repeat that. Um, look for and express regularity and repeated reasoning and the sample item. Let's work through how I can show regularity and repeated reasoning. Be my thought partner or buddy. I want to teach the avenue of thinking with students slowly and with them. Let's start by breaking this down together. What would be the first part? So why am I doing this? Because there's a lot going on in that problem. A lot. So this is very nice. It says understand the problem. So we know that we always should do MP1 being able to kind of making sense of the problem and persevere. So regardless of what avenue you choose, you want to do MP1. It says the first thing we need to do is understand the problem in front of us. Looking at the sample, we see we need to complete the table by figuring out how many students are in each grade. Here are the prompts prompt gives here the prompt gives us key data prompts points about the relationships between the number of each grade. Could you verify with me what are the given per percentages for first and fourth grade? Once clear on those, we can move forward to the next step. So you can ask students this, like this is giving you exactly what you want students to talk about. You could put it in front of them. You can have them having conversations. I mean, you could almost argue that you're having them reason through this as well. And then it says, could after you do that, Take a moment to examine the given data and relationships. Let's reason through the numbers, how the numbers fit together. This is an essential part of MP8. Like you're teaching kids what mathematical practice eight is. Telling them what it is gives them the idea of how they're thinking about math, not just the equation or the table itself. And then it says, what do you think is our first calculation based on the percentages? Okay, now you can say, great start. What, uh, assume we answered this, go ahead and answer your own questions above as if the students did this. Because you're going to have a couple of multiplication problems here. Okay, so now it's telling you, okay, so, all right, so we established the percentages, 17% of the total number of students, because it's clearly in here, it tells you all of this information here, it tells you the 19% of the students uh, are in fourth grade, then it says calculate the number of students for first and fourth grade, like, do that, 500 Let's see what it gives you this. There are a total of 500 students in grade one through five and it tells you 17 and 19 percent. So you multiply that number, tells that we assume the students did that. Step two, use the relationship given for other grades. So we already know that it says here, assume you want kids to talk this through because you, you may want to slow down and talk each individual one through because then it says the number of third grade students is nine less than the number of fourth grade. And then the number of seventh grade is 10 less. So it shows you that nine less than third grade, 10 less than second grade. Great. Now we can summarize what we have. Step three is setting up an equation for the total students. Okay. Because it then says complete the table to show the number of students in each grade enter your answers in the table. So we know we, we've come up with first, fourth, uh, second, and third. Okay. So the number of second grade students is less than the number of fifth grade students. So we already know what third grade is, but do we really know what fifth grade is? Okay. 
And it's showing us here an equation. And I'm going to say, okay, so we did, let's denote the number of fifth grade as students as X. So we have to solve for this now. There's so much going on in this problem. And I would even argue that I would have ChatGPT slow down because we had to come up with X equals 122. And you probably could derive that together because once you figure everything else out, you can add the sum of these and get this as well. But you want to get students talking about it. So when working with students, we can slow down here to ask, what do you notice about the relationship between grades? What, step, what steps did we repeat for each grade and how did it help us find the unknown values? You could, if you wanted, use the other avenues of thinking to see if they would come up with you know, um, the same answers. So that is something you can do. So what I will do is I will copy this prompt so that you have the prompt. The only thing that you will need to do is you can screenshot in the, in the video the mathematical practices, or you can go to one of my other videos and grab the PDF. And then you can go to this specific item. So if you were in the sample items right here, sampleitems.smarterbalance.org, and it would be eighth grade, and this would be the item itself. So this is something that you could do with your students. I hope that this really helps you with the mathematical practices. There are two sets of standards, no matter what state you're in. You have the domain standards, like is it geometry, making sense of numbers, um, algebraic thinking, um, equations, expressions, whatever that is, those change every year from kinder through content, whether it's algebra, trigonometry, geometry, statistics, calculus. But the one thing that doesn't change are the eight mathematical practices. So if we start with students in kindergarten using the mathematical practices, they will already have background knowledge as they move into their upper grades. And the mathematical practices, again, they're the same for every grade level. So I do hope this helps. I will do the next four mathematical practices navigating through the problems in the coming weeks. Thank you so much for watching. Yes, make sure you subscribe, like, and comment. Tell me how you're using ChatGPT to help you in the classroom uh, create professional development as a principal or just support you and using the mathematical practices.